Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell hoax we come up with this week. Battle Simulator War Thunder has taken the Vulcan Challenge, and it kind of works if you poke it with a stick and repeatedly. And do you have the need? The need for speed. Because if you do, there's an open source Need for Speed 3 engine in the works. Valve's bringing big trouble to big China. Well, at least for the XP holdouts. And why you know Linux Bro, Reddit's finest minds attempt to give us an answer. Steam brings us group chats and makes some questionable decisions about the so-called fake games. And then Lutris lets you filter by Vulcan. Direct text to Vulcan, to be more precise. I'm Vince Stone here at LGC Actual, switching the bits, doing the nightmare fuel, running the boards. Uh, I'm joined every week by a... Um, s- our Toronto, our tamed Canadian podcaster who's been dying to pick his nose, who actually (laughs) got up before we went live to pick his nose off camera just to save us from that horrible, horrible No, that Um, that, that was more of a snot rocket thing, to be perfectly honest. Okay, that's right. Like like getting getting the the tap running with like the hot water and trying to like dislodge it. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls from the land of Britannia on the island, one Pedro Mateus, you know him, you love him. Because together, us three, with Shadow Realm, Dynamic, joining us in IRC and Discord, helping us form, you know it, Go Game Voltron. Before we get started, we do like to see what's going on in each other's life organs. Man, um, I, I, I'm still in the process of this uh, Project Bifrost planning stuff, and you know, I always say other than, you know that part of your brain that is like, at work, it is fucking on shit, even though you are <laughs> completely doing something else, and it pops in the middle of the day, it's like, yo, how about this? What, what would you rather do? And I was like, dude, dude, calm down. And um, yeah, and he likes to get on about shit right when you lay down. I was like, try this. Why, why, why don't you see if this works? Uh, it doesn't actually talk, Pedro, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Some people are capable of having more than one thought, you know? Uh, no, I'm a very one track, one track mind person. So, okay, tell, tell me what type of one track thoughts have you had this week, sweetheart? Uh, well, I had a surprise, which I actually it's forgot. Hold on, only choice: throw up your hands and raise your voice. Monorail, monorail. <laughs> uh, I monorail. forgot about this one that I had ordered like three months ago, and it came from China. Yes, it's the teeny tiny Noctua AM4 for the. Uh, xbox 360 build which is currently on hold on account of uh i need to you know consider moving and uh trips to portugal and whatnot i I, actually actually i have experience with that specific model of cooler yeah the one for the uh for the am3 mounting bracket uh you got to watch out like it's not good for anything over like a 65 watt tdp Hmm. that's what it's going to be running it's the uh, Ryzen 2400G, unless something else better comes out in the meantime. I, I mean, I, I was running it on, like, one of the 95-watt APUs, and it lasted for, like, a year and a half. But then it's just, Poof. like, no mas, no mas. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, how about Umas, Unomas, uh, the horse? It's back again. Uh, the oh, horse the, is the, back. The, 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 ho- the horse is back. The horse is um, not allowed in China anymore. It's the steam! Linux! Oh, 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 I don't know. I still got to play around with that. Ladies and yeah. gentlemen, a beta updates all up in your face. Oh, yeah. No, there's a brand new beta update as of June 12th. Um, the big news here that everyone gets is the... Uh, well, um, there, there's, uh, there's the new friends chat thing. We're going to talk about that a little more in depth. Um, mm-hmm. they also, they also are killing, uh, support for windows XP and Vista. We're going to talk about that at length a little bit more. <laughs> and, uh, the, the one non expanded on topic in this update is, uh, the, uh, steam, uh, you, you can now use, uh, windows icons in your steam Linux depots, uh, which I guess if you're lazy enough to, I, I don't, I don't know. Microsoft has this stupid, like their own ICO icon file. That's mm-hmm. not a PNG. Like when you set a fave ICO on a web server or whatever, that can just be like whatever you want. But mm-hmm. this has to be the specifically formatted image. And it's really annoying, especially when you're trying to create shortcuts for Windows subsystem for Linux, when you're trapped in Windows because of corporate environments. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Man, listen, I don't use desktop icons if I can fucking help it. Most people have seen my desktop because for the longest time, XFCE4 didn't support desktop icons and I was okay with this. But... Um, Following that, the June 13th beta update added generic gamepad support for over 100 popular game controllers. But Steam's not going to tell you which ones. Have fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, 
Pro- probably, probably what it is is they they now they have the they just did a pull on like the SDL button definitions that they do periodically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, because because there's there's an open source project for tracking that. Uh, I think Flip, I, either either Flipit runs it or he endorses it or something like that. I wholly endorse this controller <laughs> thing. Uh, mm-hmm. Steam's trying to change some things, Pedro. Yeah, yeah, they are, and they posted a little bit of news to the uh, Steamworks developer side of things, where uh, they said that more changes are in order uh, to address the fake game issue that's been plaguing Steam for for a while, and uh, the Steam database, as uh, they're off to do, they put a screenshot of it on Twitter, and well, cue the speculation, because there were a lot of people just, uh, just like, okay, what's this going to mean? Well, uh, what they're doing right now is you don't get to have trading cards unless your game is considered legit. Uh, how they figure out what exactly is legit, is not no one's entirely sure. I'm sure they tell the developers, but the developers... Wait, wait, really wait, wait, wait a minute. Are you trying to say that the, ga- the earn free Bitcoins game I bought? It's not- yeah. No, my, the, you can't my, have minor, minor Simulator 20, 2018. <laughs> mm-hmm. Man, a lot, a, a lot of a lot of priests bought that game and were very disappointed with what they got. <laughs> and they're expanding you. on that by uh, if your game uh, is not legit, it won't count for profiles. It won't count for the game count itself. Uh, it won't. Uh, you won't get any coupons for it because you know people really care about those for like a one dollar asset flip. And of course, you don't get the uh, the trading cards. So yeah. It, it's I, I I like the I like the whole like oh you only get a hundred achievements so, <laughs> oh, oh no whatever will our, our poor players do with only a hundred achievements to unlock I don't know uh, I mean a lot of people care about stuff like that I I don't think any of us or are, are the right age to be achievement junkies but. Yeah. I do know people in my like meat space group. They're like, yeah, if you get this one, I mean, it literally shits achievements and it shows up on you. So, I, don't... I, I mean, they're 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 a good marker if you're trying to like 100 percent a game because mm-hmm. usually usually they'll set up achievements for like when you hit the major goals. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But yeah, the, the, this is this is this is very much red. Nobody's allowed to scam our users but <laughs> us. So pretty much. Yeah. Seems legit. Uh, Discord, Steam Cord, it's a thing. Group chats. Oh, yes. Yes, it's Steam a thing. Cards. So, uh, like Jordan hit it at, it's the Steam group chats. Yes. Uh, now you may be thinking, oh, hold on a sec. Didn't uh, Steam already allow for group chats? Yes, but it was the chat room for whichever Steam group you were in. Now you can create your own group chats with just people from your friends list. Like, you know, you've been able to do with Discord since it came out, uh, <laughs> but it's yeah, it's uh, it does group chat. It can do uh, text and audio. Uh, it has some, uh, you know, it supports like pictures and video. It's, it, uh, it, it's Steam Discord. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it's it's trying to get to about feature parity with Discord, complete with weird cr- embedded Chromium bugs. I, I, took, mm-hmm. I took the I took a pl- the plunge on this, and like I tried to set up a group chat. And it's like, no, Chrome has completely died, and we're not going to let you get the the chat window back open until you restart Steam. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, when I, I first saw this, uh, it was not met with a lot of excitement for a good reason, because Valve, Discord, already ate your lunch, son. I mean, yeah. you, there's, there's no playing catch-up with this, even with lock-in. And I, I kind of feel that... This is kind of what happens when, when you're on top of something, no real competition, you get stagnation in everything else. Anything that's not your main product, you kind of get lazy, you know? I, I, I would sit here and explain how, you know, small, hungry companies like Discord just starting out are able to move fast, innovate, come up with stuff that people really want. But, you know, I don't really feel like that. Hashtag Ben time. So what, what, what would absolutely be hilarious, though, is if the audio quality for the Steam voice chats was better than Discord and good enough for LGC to use. Listen, listen, if you throw me some high quality video with great audio, uh, man, I, I will gobble that game and cock all day long. But until that, we'll, we'll keep using our open source uh, train of choo-choo pixels and audio. Mm-hmm. All right. Well. China isn't here. I, f- I forget the exact quote, but um, Valve is now going to officially launch Steam in China. 
Uh, you get a apparently there's going to be a local corporate par partnership because if um, third party corporations want to do stuff in China, they got to have some involvement with the actual Chinese government um, through some shell company. So, uh, th so this is a thing that's going to happen. Before there was like standalone launchers for Dota two for Team Fortress, Counter Strike, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, which were actually just the Steam client. And if you started them up with a command line argument, you could actually get to the Steam client. Um, but uh, this will um, this 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 will um, further enable the hordes of PUBG players to flood in and completely warp all the Steam statistics. I don't know, man. I mean, I honestly think if you're going to get an official Steam version, because I've already talked to some people in China. Well, halfway because uh, Zen's husband doesn't. His English is about as good as my Mandarin, so she attempted to interpret because he does game, mm -hmm. and he's like fucking VPN, man. He's like, nobody would ever use this unless they're forced to somehow. And anything that they would get is going to be like modified, over censored, you know. To right. And and it's yeah. it's not it's not even that. Like the content library itself will probably be heavily restricted because China's all about that. Mm -hmm. So you're yeah, um unless you unless you're gonna VPN out, you're probably gonna get like a fraction of what's uh, available. Plus, like you said, all all the games that will be available will be like the regional variants that have all the censorship and anti china stuff removed um i mean i this this is kind of a neutral thing i i don't think either any of us have like an opinion of it one way or another no but no. it's an interesting move and it'll be uh interesting to see if it's like region locked and if it's enforced and the vpns are blocked because that, that's going to mess with the steam numbers Oh yeah, uh, it it absolutely will. Maybe maybe Steam's gonna pull a uh, Netflix. But, well, one uh, thing that will really really jack up the numbers is this. First of all, ha ha, just in general for anyone still gaming on XP, but hundreds of thousands of Windows XP users won't be able to use Steam soon. Valve is kicking the operating system off its service starting January 2019. Upgrade or GTFO. Outside of just a fun jab at like seriously. Seriously, uh, XP uh, users, uh, not 0.22% according to Valve, uh, 125 million Steam users. A, that's kind of frightening. B, come over to Linux, bro. Come over to Linux, sis. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta get on that React OS. Like, like, <laughs> like I said in the notes, something, something in the back of my mind tells me that this and the China thing are related. A little close together, quite, isn't it? Right. I can't quite yeah. put my finger I, on I, I, I can't exactly is. bring the connection, man, but yeah. It's, but talk, that, that, talk that, about that those literally numbers. my first reaction. Like, when I, when I saw that, I'm like, that, that's... It. If we could get that 1%, though, I mean, hell, if we get half of that 1%, that's we'll, good. We'll be at 1.5%. <laughs> right. But a lot of people, which I do know this, a lot of people in China are playing on XP. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and a lot, a lot of it is uh, like uh, cafes, internet mm -hmm. cafes, and whatnot, because yeah. like pirated XP copies are you, you can't you can't swing a dead cat without running into one. Right. Um, so yeah. that's our Steam. Let's get into a few game updates. Actually, just one this week. That's War of Thunder and the Lightning. Uh, Thunder. You know, pay to win, free to play. Uh, major update: one point seven nine Project X gang and you shit in this, which honestly. Don't fucking care about any of it. The The only use I have ever had for this was its shit-tastic OpenGL render that had a benchmark. And it was always fun to just throw something at this. But the reason we're going to bring this up, this isn't even included in the update. There'll be a link to the War Thunder forums to a post on how to enable this because it's a motherfucker. They snuck in a working Vulcan render. It had a Vulcan render, but it was missing a gang of shaders, so it didn't mm -hmm. quite work. Now, it technically, if you have an AMD card on Linux, you can get it up and running. Uh, the only way to do it, basically, you got to go into a config file and basically change engine render and um, default and render. You, then you, you have, have to, to create a file. Well, you have to, the file's there. You have to create an uppercase version of it. Yeah. Is what you got to do. <laughs> then you got to lock yes, that file idea. because it tries to overwrite. It's multi step. And if you're on NVIDIA, you can actually see the screen, see the window, and see it launch. But as soon as you uh, put it in focus, the screen goes black. So mm. there's that. But I, did, I wanted to bring that up because I thought it was interesting that, you know, even uh, free-to-play stuff. I'm like, yeah, let's not do DX12, bro. Let's, 
you just spoken to? I, 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 I don't know, because like E3 just happened and it seems like a lot of the big studios are still guzzling that DX12 sauce. Like it's no tomorrow. All they know. And uh, you know, the even though they have to effectively code two different uh render paths, one for Windows and one for the X Bone, it X-Bone's, the X Bone still uh, run yeah, uh it still runs uh the X twelve. So yeah, that's where AAA makes its money. Consoles. But then again, it's the Xbox. I mean, let's talk, target the smallest. <laughs> no, then again, PS4 has been a dick about there. Uh, what what game was it? Uh, Fortnite. Uh, Fortnite. Yeah. Yeah. Dick move. Dick move. Hell, uh, even Nintendo has cross multiplayer, <laughs> and that's that's Nintendo. The man, online gaming is a good idea. We'll get to that in about. Well, here's the years. thing. I, I will say this with PS4. It's kind of a weird thing I have with because of like just not with Xbox. They're like, oh, PC? Yeah, you can do crossplay with PC. Just just mm-hmm. just not Xbox. I was like, yeah, I don't really know where I want to fall on that. I'm like, mm. <laughs> you, you're doing it for the wrong reasons, but all right, I kind of like it. Uh, new games, what do we got? Indeed, we start with uh, Master Pyrox, Wizard Smackdown. Pyrox? Pyrox. Eh, mm. One of those. Well, it's a uh, isometric... Uh, I can all only describe it as like an isometric 3D lethal league because you're a wizard and you go around and you can smack the other players to stun them, but if you want to kill them, you have to smack the little fireballs that appear on the map. And it's uh, it's got, you know, online multiplayer, which is uh, something that you kind of need to... Uh... What's it? Uh, uh, it's that you kind of need to um, have if you mm-hmm. have a party style game. It's uh, it's good to see more multiplayer games. This one looks a little bare bones ish, but mm. who knows? Might surprise us. I don't know. I, I'm down with that. And you know, pff, why not? I mean, low system requirements, and it has a uh, multiplayer, which is kind of something. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> normally see uh we got one last bit it seems like space canada died in a fire but we only got one mm-hmm. more story so we're Indeed. going to pop over to that uh stone shard stone prologue shard. it's yeah. thing check it out uh it's alpha for an actual roguelite that uh, establishes gameplay and mechanics as cheap as in free you can check it it doesn't look bad pedro for free games yeah. but hell this looks better than a lot of paid games i've seen lately oh yes it does and i actually got a chance to try the little alpha demo thing that they use to promote their kickstarter mm-hmm. which yes they had a kickstarter going uh it's already yeah it's already over and uh i'm not entirely sure if they were funded or not let me do some quick yes they were okay so we'll actually be able to see the game in its final form hopefully very very soon so yeah good on them that's uh it's it's a very good looking and they had a demo which is pretty good to see that's the way you do it and pretty low system requirements uh, 1404 uh, 500 megs so might be something worth to check out and uh, yes. since our tame canadian podcaster has died in a fire i'm going to take us out of this but coming up next oh man we're going to be talking about a gog a way to connect to that what kind of just one game some vulcanized lutris and uh your mom runs windows 10 and ways to scream that at your opponents online coming up next over here we've been condemned to death by snoo snoo and if you don't know what i'm on about (laughs) you should have watched the little bit in between which now you can if you're a Patreon. So, uh, Jordan, how can people, you know, besides Patreon, how can they give us all their uh, quarters? Um, you can uh, you can head on over to uh, LinuxGameCast.com, click that support the show button, where we got all sorts of fascinating and exciting flashing lights and buttons, billions and wait, hypnotic for, patterns. You wait, 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 fuck off, man! Uh, you, you, I can use flashing lights on this page now. Listen, you can get marquee tags up in this bitch. Are you, are go, you, are go, you saying LGC is going to bring the motherfucking blink tag back, motherfuckers? Go buck wild, buddy. Oh, shit, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to stop you. It's on now. <laughs> all right. Yeah, we, we got all sorts of crazy links. Uh, Humble affiliate links, Newegg affiliate links. Uh, 
uh, Amazon affiliate links for many, many countries. So if you just want to buy some stuff and support us, you can. We got Bitcoin, we got Libra Pay, all sorts of things that you can enter your credit card number after clicking a couple links past that. But all the cool people who want to actually Our engage with people. us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast, where 117 of these schmucks, I mean Gorgeous. loyal fans are uh, people. Yeah, are giving us uh, 256 bucks a week to pump out this nightmare fuel. We're four bucks away from doing the shirt run, so... Ooh, yeah. And Patreon's going to make that a lot easier on us because they're doing an integration with a um, logistics and shipping company. Nice. So, so nice. That, that, that's going to be cool. But joining the Patreon gets you a bunch of other cool shit. You get access to Discord. Sometimes we'll rope you in. We got we got a couple streams that were brought to you by Discord. That if you're a dis or that if you're not Discord, yes, brought to Discord. you by Patreon. We are financed by Discord. The secrets. Oh out, man, man. I, I wish. Then we might get like <laughs> decent audio quality out of there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, br- brought to you by Patreon. You can show up on those. Uh, you get access to the show notes. You can buy. You get a, you get access to early stuff. It's good stuff. And we got uh, we got a couple of new patreons. We got to thank Winter Cell, who shows up on the Friday night food bar and kicked our food butts. Bar? Quite, food <laughs> bar, man. Okay. Yeah, you, you you go there. There's like a salad. You eat <laughs> food yeah. and bars. Yeah, mm, food and bars. Delicious bars. And uh, Yosef B as well. Uh, so thank you very much, Yosef. Yeah, we we we, we, were, we were talking about this on Friday. Um, yeah, that, that log cabin goal. Log cabin is secret code for abandoned nuclear <laughs> missile silo. Mm-hmm. So this is a Patreon goal. Uh, 100%. Is, you the get, missile, is the missile still in the silo, though? Hey, man, listen. That's negotiable. We'll the deal war, with that. We, 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 we want the it. missile. The warhead's negotiable. You guys All keep right. us loud, live, <laughs> independent. You don't have to worry about us. Uh, we don't have to do ads, and we get to tell you what's on our mind. Hopefully, you like it. And as a reminder, we always do have Frank. He's chilling out back there. For anyone hey. who's thrown us uh, some much needed hardware, now's a good time because we're doing this project. Bye, Frost, because you watch the live stream. Things are a little unstable right now. All the beautiful, gorgeous people get listed on the fine, upstanding, countable wall. You know them and your name in the credits. It's extra, but we still love you like that. Thank you, everyone. Oh, and like share the show, man. If you're like, yeah, fuck this money thing. Fuck you guys. We're cool like that. We wish this was free to do it. That'd be a lot easier. Yeah. Um, just share the show if that's your thing. That, that's cool because we don't have a marketing. You are a marketing department. Could, could and Linux that's terrifying. Gamecast, could Linux Gamecast survive in a post-scarcity society? Send us some hate mail. Yeah. <laughs> tell, tell us your opinion about that. Uh, so let's, let's kick off the news segment. So. Got a lovely little. We're 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 gonna start seeing the shift away from GitHub links to GitLab links, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna keep calling it GitHub because my brain is fucked. Don't do drugs, kids. But um, there uh, some someone on the Gog forums posted this. This is the Comet Galaxy client for uh, for Linux, and what it does is it's a library you can compile that will allow you to hook into the multiplayer services available via Galaxy without necessarily having Galaxy installed because you can't do that on Linux. Mm-hmm. Mind you, they can't do incremental updates either. So, I mean, maybe maybe get that sorted before, you know, <laughs> bringing, bringing that over here. That's all I'm saying. Um, but yeah, no, if, if you, uh, if right now it only supports Stardew Valley, right? But mm-hmm. uh, yep. more, more game support will come as the project matures. Well, I saw um, the thing, you know, Pedro's yeah. like, I don't know, they support Stardew Valley. Pedro, that's probably the only thing anyone can gives a damn about. Fair, fair. <laughs> but it is the only thing that's supported right now. Mm-hmm. And like Jordan already mentioned, it only supports the multiplayer bits. I mean, it would be nice to have something like incremental patching to have. But that that that, that is so outside the scope of this, this project. This project <laughs> is just get your non-Galaxy game talking to the Galaxy services. Yeah, that's right. it. That's uh, I wonder. Mm-hmm. I am curious though. Okay. Uh, if say you're playing a wine game on Linux, would you be able to hook this up to get uh, to wine to get it to? Uh, Pedro, to Pedro, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you a question, and I want your sin- sincere answer. Does Windows support using DSO objects? Uh, no, not that I'm aware of. <laughs> that, uh, there, 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 there's, there's your answer. Up next. <laughs> but uh, up next, we have, well, it's Strider. It's Strider lupus. has, uh, yeah, uh, Strider has uh, posted a bit of an announcement on Google Plus and uh, asked, do you want to search for the list of all DXVK-backed games that are on Lutris? Now you can uh, and well, there it is. It's uh, a list of all the games that will work 
relatively well with Lutris. Some of them are just awesome. Oh, it's might, a one-click I, install. I might, I, I might need to burn a heretic purchase on Phantom Pain. Oof. <laughs> No, yeah, th- this uh, is really, uh, this is good. If you're a filthy dual booting heathen that uh, can't, uh, well, you, let's say you've made the switch, right? Mm-hmm, you, mm-hmm. You've given up the Windows way of life and you, you want to play these games. This is a way to do it. And also support Lupus on Patreon. Patreon there's yes. a link in the show notes or patreon.com forward slash Lutris. Uh, Strider, you know him. He comes in time to time and complains about stuff and leaves. Doing a good job with that. This is good to sort through because uh, one thing, you know, we've said on the show for a long time is that uh, because Pedro brought up virtual programming, right? Yeah, it's uh, Lutris is now doing a better job of bringing games to Linux than virtual programming ever did. And, you know, we're like, oh, man, uh, VP better look for a different line of work once DX11 support lands and wine proper. Because that was kind of their bread and chainsaws. Yeah. I, I didn't see DX11 support coming via DXVK, but fuck me, it did, man. Oh, yeah. I, and, I, and I mean, like, we, we, we were talking about sort of the, the, the precursor to it a while ago, like years ago now. There was, there was someone who was trying to implement all of DirectX 9 in a similar DLL, doing doing that all in Vulkan. Mm-hmm. And we, we were talking, like, this this is a good solution. It's not particularly out-of-the-box friendly because you have to inject the, the dynamic library into the game, but beyond that, you're all using native Vulkan stuff, so it's good, and it will uh, help you play some wine games on uh, some lower spec hardware. As a uh, chat room member Zoe was talking about earlier in the week, you should totally become a Patreon so that you can get in there. It's kind of brilliant. Yeah. Um, yeah. Shilling. Uh, up next, uh, the best way to say disparaging remarks about your opponent's mother on Linux for free. Best free voice chat software for Linux gaming. A roundup of your usual suspects. Discord, Mumble, and TeamSpeak. Uh, I agree with you, Jordan. That's a little lazy. Uh, I think, really, uh, Discord's in first place. They gave uh, Mumble second place, TeamSpeak third. Ease of use, I I would probably go with Discord. Yeah. You know, setting up. Plus, all your friends are there. It has that. Yeah. Um... Nothing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, for, for a second there, I thought the audio cut out, and it's it's been enough of those nights that I'm like, gotta gotta gotta, gotta wait for a thing. Anyways, um, yeah. So this this is pretty much a wrap of all the low effort stuff, and I mean, you could be a crazy person that runs your own SIP XMPP WebRTC solution, but I mean, no one in the right mind fucking. Does no, you that, wouldn't, you know? and eventually you just go back to using like uh, the one that was already rolled out for you. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's uh, it would be interesting to see. Maybe this is just a reflection of what people outside of Linux see Linux as. It's like, oh yeah, Linux has a gaming thing now. Let's uh, well, see what kind of software it has for the gamers. I, I mean, like, I mean, so th- this is coming from LinuxLinks.com, so I'm not necessarily sure about. Links to all this stuff in our show notes, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they're awesome. You can check that out. No, that, that's um, good. You use what you want. I think uh, we were talking in the pre pre super shows, and it's like, yeah, or it might have been just regular pre show. Remember, Steam has an audio thing built into it, too. Yes. And that's yeah. probably where you're playing your multiplayer games from. That wasn't even on the list. So, yeah. <laughs> Whatevs. Moving on Unreal Engine 4 and War Games. All right. So, this is, this is a Reddit thread, and this is basically mining the comments for. Uh, Funny shit to riff on. So this is this is from Unre- their Unreal Engine subreddit. They're saying, why do I see so few Lynx games made with Unreal Engine 4? And it's a valid question because one of the big things with Unreal Engine 4 is that it supports most platforms under the goddamn moon. Mm-hmm. So, um, of course, because this is a Reddit thread, you're going to have uh, uninformed masses making de- declarative, authoritative statements on things that they don't understand. I'm going to get a bag of popcorn. Mm. Uh, yeah, uh, but so you, you you get you get a lot of like the the traditional responses of oh you have to support all these distributions piracy is rampant on Linux why would you do it it's one percent of the population blah, blah 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 it's, it's still yeah. too small to bother with there's also larger Linux communities dedicated to piracy holding you in um check this out Brad <laughs> sweetheart um 
Here's the thing. You know, I first of all, I, I was a little saddened to actually see someone broke down Linux users or pirates argument. Linux mm. users spend shitloads of money. So they are some very, very, very reliable sponsors of open source projects and games because we've done without for so long. Also, can someone point me to this mythical fucking pirated software treasure trove for Linux games? Because I'm not fucking seeing it. Yeah, and even the few ones that you can find, good luck getting them to run on a current day operating system. It's just not going to happen. Uh, it's it's really disheartening in a way to see how quickly the delusion crops up and uh, you see Windows users claiming that Windows has no issues and therefore it's a better platform. It's like, what version of Windows have you been using? Because I deal with that shit at work and it crashes all the fucking time. I don't know. And, and especially with Windows 10, the creators updates like breaking full screen in games, making things just oh, straight yeah. up not launch. It's not great. And let's let's be real. If you're uh, if you're primarily a Windows developer and you're trying to move to Linux, yeah, there's a learning curve that you're gonna you're gonna slam into. But these are these are not valid excuses, right? The, the, the whole chicken and egg thing has been done away with. There, there is a market for Linux games. We see that um, the reason that more people aren't running Linux right now and buying AAA games is because they're not available on the platform. This is true. And back to the point of the original post is Unreal Engine 4 is also a motherfucker to work with under Linux because Epic has not supported it in the slightest. Everything that we have has been community developed. You got to give the community mad props because like less than three or four days later, once the source was made available, you could kind of get the damn editor up and running. Now, now it's a lot more stable. And, you know, we probably have what, eight, nine total games. We've uh, through the chairs. At mm -hmm. a couple of Unreal Engine four titles, and yeah, there is uh, a lot of work to be done still. Yeah, there, 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 there definitely is. And I, again, once once Unreal gets to the point where we can do like the Unity four click export and fire and forget and have something mm -hmm. semi workable, it's going to become yeah. And and again, people that's that's the other thing that bugs me. People bring up like the support issues, dude. Have you seen how, how the shit state of release software on Windows, especially <laughs> in the gaming space? Oh, yeah. I'd like to bring up a contemporary example, Batman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a like, thing. That's also yeah. a byproduct of targeting consoles. Um, yeah. yeah. Moving on, but still on the topic of Unreal Bluey, an easy way to create game UI. I wanted to give this, uh, this is open source.com. I wanted to give this project a shout out because, hey, man, more tools for Unreal Engine is good. Open source game development plugin allows Unreal Engine users to create unique user interfaces, elements with web-based programming, which might sound like, ooh, I don't know about that. But <laughs> you can create user interface, you know, your basic UI components using web-based programming, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and it also provides full support for the open uh, source Chromium embedded framework, which is nice. If you're a small team, you can't afford the hot, expensive sauce, or you don't want to deal with the built-in nonsense that comes with Unreal Engine 4. Some people do not find, they find it about as user-friendly as a coiled rattlesnake. So uh, they've came together, stuck this together. It's on GitHub, probably. Uh, yeah, it is right there. They have yep. documentation forms. And they said it's pretty trivial to get this business up and running. And it's, it's good to see things like that helping out. I, 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 I don't know, because after working, working with Node and whatnot for a while mm -hmm. and like deal, dealing with like front-end developer horseshit, <laughs> Whenever I see this, like, oh well, we we figured out a way to take our take our C plus plus, and then we're just gonna write JavaScript on top of it. My first reaction is just to groan audibly. Mm. Uh, it's like, would you like your Unreal Engine four game to render the entire UI using a single core? There you go. Well, well, <laughs> so, well so, I mean, I mean, you can you can CSS is multi threaded. JavaScript's kind of the big poo poo thing. You and might but, as but, well, but, man. I mean, considering you're going to be running, we're all going to be playing games like like full-blown games in five max seven years through fucking browsers anyway man oh man well we're we're, we're, we're holding we're all holding our breaths for web vk as opposed to web gl so <laughs> you know what's gonna happen baby uh let's talk about some wine yeah well we're, we're talking we're talking about uh piracy and where where all the <laughs> the linux pirates are going probably here um so <laughs> this is this is a wine pack it is a uh, it is a tool for uh 
adding or for creating flat packs out of wine games so that you can ship a binary that will theoretically just run makes your wine game fairly easy to use etc cetera, etc cetera. i mean and it, and here's the thing like it definitely lowers the barrier of entry for wine noobs you're gonna you're gonna definitely run into some issues actually distributing the software that you're flat packing though because unless you have the rights to do that you can't so yeah. well you can but you will <laughs> open yourself up to various legal liabilities etc cetera, etc cetera. and you know one might, one might think hey this might be a decent way for like oh if you're gonna if you're we're reporting our game politics using wine here mm-hmm. here you go now I, I i had the same i have the same concern with this that i had with uh vulcan from the outset now we're expecting devs to learn how to wine well yeah but they, they could probably google this and th- this is actually going to give them a little box to shove everything in though i i think they're going to have slightly better i i and don't think it's a good idea i agree yeah. with you on that but this does remove the because anybody's like so is it okay if i just release my game using wine i'm like no why because wine's a fucking moving target it's mm-hmm. not going to be the same with the same version of wine on just different uh, distributions you're going to run into just it's just an extra layer of fuckery but if you can contain that layer of fuckery mm-hmm. and a flat pack it's always the same layer right <laughs> so hey that's good and jordan you bring up a good point man you, you just don't don't go shoving other people's shit you know and distributing we it. already had that story mm-hmm. of someone i can't i can't remember what the game was but there was a flat pack that made it to the pirate bay or something Oh and, uh, yeah, a, a couple of these guys were doing that, and I mean, it makes sense if they're going to go through the process of you know cracking the game, they might as well mm-hmm. make it available for anyone to play. If you if you if you're one of these pirate or if you're one of these uh, game cracker guys, it's it's not it's not a huge logical step. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. and North Ranger brings up a very good point. You wouldn't flat pack a car. Fuck you, I would if I could. <laughs> Hong Kong motherfuckers. Um, <laughs> Check this out, man. Open Need for Speed 3 and attempt to recreate the original Need for Speed 3, unpacking its original data files into a modern scratch build engine. Hey, man. What works? Uh, full car viv file loading, tracks, uh, preliminary Need for Speed 2 track loading, and uh, dynamic music playback. Basic. Oh, look at that little Lambo SV. It's so <laughs> 90s. It's a thing. It's not really playable right now, but there's a Trello development board for it. You can throw in there. What do you need? Glue, GLFW, GLM, bullet uh, for physics and boost. So, yeah, there's a little bit of a to-do there, and it's just good to see this in the works. I wanted to give this just a little mention because I I missed out on all the – I think I had Need for Speed on DOS, like the original (laughs) – I'm 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 a little sad. Maybe this will come later on, but I want I want to see some SDL integration in here so that it'll work with like yeah. various game pads and driving wheels mm-hmm. and TDR pads and whatnot. Yeah, that'd be great. And once that engine's down, I mean, yeah, you're going to be able to roll back into Need for Speed Two and like a bunch of the classics. Mm-hmm. So, although good. I am curious, uh, those uh, bullet physics, mm-hmm. it's. If you're re-implementing the physics engine as well as everything else, ooh, this might take a bit. <laughs> it might, but a lot of these projects start they're learning projects. It's like yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. Okay, man. And, and 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 I mean look at look, look at look at the the granddaddy of all these things, Open Morrowind, right? Mm-hmm. They made yeah. it, it's it's taken them like 6 years, but they've made some remarkable prob- progress, especially having to like cut their losses and like switch from from ogre to like open scene graph and all that shit. Yeah. Mhm. But yeah. the thing with the particular version of Gamebryo that Bethesda used for Morrowind is that it didn't have any physics. You don't have any physics. <laughs> Every, we're, we're, we're all subject to the laws of physics. <laughs> it's a harsh, it's a harsh mistress. <laughs> um, there were no simulated physics is what I mean. So, yeah, let's, let's get a bit scummy, right? Yes, let's get a bit scummy. And the people behind ScumVM may, may have a gotten into bed with some pretty scummy people in my opinion so uh they have uh, announced that they will be joining up with cyan inc or cyan inc uh the makers of mist riven uru and that other game that they refuse to release on linux because linux R- is R- and uh R- i i don't R- know what R- R- rupaul's R- mist oh man i played the fuck out of that game but yeah, so the original Mist uh, and Mist Masterpiece Edition and Riven and Mist Three, uh, they all work with either ScumVM or Residual VM. 
so the guys from Cyan and Scum VM are getting together to make some official Scum VM releases for the Myst games, which is awesome. That is great to see. But uh, Empty brought up a good point, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Um, <laughs> and if you want to, if again to pointlessly shill, if you want to be able to participate in the creation of the show, you can become a Patreon, get access <laughs> to the show notes, and fight with us in the middle of the show notes. Um, <laughs> But we we, co- we covered we covered uh, the missed Kickstarter two weeks ago, and the question was asked: Are you guys going to be supporting te- Linuxes? And they mm-hmm. said, "Well, we googled what Linux is, and it looks like there's a lot of them, so we're not going to do it." Last I checked, Brad Scum runs on pretty much everything. But they're so, gonna, they're going to put their top people on it to make sure it's just available yeah. and for yeah. Windows and Mac. Uh, I, I could see them doing that, man. This. I, I, I don't know. They, they don't say anything about coming to Linux. This is the, I'll tell you what this is. Th- this is getting those games by hiring the lowest bidder. This is what this fuck it is. <laughs> and so expect what you could expect from it. And I, I mean, I, I think ultimately it's a good thing for scum because it gives a uh, scum VM because it gives them an air of legitimacy. They get to actually work with the developers to improve their engine. Mm-hmm. And Sc- yeah. scum has been an awesome open source project for a while. So, Oh, I love I'm, scum. Scum's awesome. Yeah. I'm just saying working. I, I don't think, you know, any lifting that gets done is going to be done from the scum team, not the other way around. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I, oh yeah. I, absolutely. 100%. But, but again, kudos to them. They're, it's probably going to be a nice injection of cash that they probably really need. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, most, most of like the, uh, the double fine old, uh, LucasArts ports are using scum. Yeah. yeah. So, or scum yeah. VM. So I, again, it's, it's a fairly widespread project. Um, it's awesome. Uh, and good for these guys for uh, coming up with par- partnership. Bad on Cyan for just being ignorant doofs. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, so I guess coming up next. A game. It's, it's, it's a game. It's like if someone decided to make Portal with the least amount of effort possible. And no bridges. <laughs> and no, no, bridges. No, 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 no trucks or bridges. Speedy thing go in the hole. Speedy thing go out of the hole. There's lots of things going in holes this week. This is where we're throwing chairs at Portarius. Portarius. <laughs> Portapodius. It's developed by uh, Dmitry Poznikov. And um, it's done on the Cocos 2D X engine. You can pick it up for around five of your local wet, stinky currencies. What is it? Open up a portal and begin your journey. Teleport rocks, water, and your spaceship. Uh, immense ha- uh, immerse oh, immense. in handcrafted worlds, <laughs> solve puzzles, and be the first at the center of the earth. Immense in handcrafted puzzles. Yes. Uh, the devs did send us some keys, so thank you, Dimitri, for that. This is Checkquisition. This is where we take a game, do a little bit of uh, quality assurance, maybe talk about it, do a review, and tell you what we thought of it. Boingy, boingy, boingy. <laughs> it's kind of hypnotic watching the footage if you're listening to this to, in audio. It, uh, it, it goes to some places. Anyways, Chairquisition works in a brand new way. We break things down. Uh, you get one of four chairs for the functional category. Does it launch performance graphics control? And then we'll give an ar- more arbitrary rating based on what we feel, the fun facts and feels. That's how it goes. Let's burn through this real quick. Uh, then does it launch on Ubuntu? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, uh, three operating systems we're going to be doing for the audio listeners. I'm on Ubuntu. Jordan is Fedora. And Pedro is Solas. So if you're playing the home game, does it launch? Now I'm running on the Ryzen 1700, um, 1804 LTS, 16 gigajoules of RAM with a 980. Yeah, it launches. Not a problem with it. Uh, it does full screen windowed mode. And that's really your only two options you have. Uh, when it comes to QA, if you're going to run into an issue, which I did, is it will peg and hang one single core at 100% just straight up freeze if you alt tab when you're inside of a level. If you're at the loading screen, menu screen, not a problem. You alt-tab inside a level, you got to check something. Uh, You're not getting back into the game. I mean, you're going to have to force close that window. Uh, Nothing to subtract any points on that. But one thing I will bring up, you basically got two options. You got one thing to maximize full screen, one thing to put it in a window where you can set the resolution of your choice, and uh, you can cut the sound on and off. That's pretty much it here in Humbuntu land. How's it going in Fedora? Yeah, um, it launches. It definitely does on uh, Fedora 28. Uh, the alt-tab thing is real. Though I found it's not 100% reliable. It's if you alt-tab and then you wait a little bit and then come back to it, mm. then it will freeze. If you like alt-tab out for like 
I think the longest I got it for was like under 30 seconds. You're, you're, you're in the clear, but uh, other than that, um, yeah, the, um, the, I'm not sure how I feel about like the lack of resolution options when you can just resize the window, I guess, like make it clear in the UI. Otherwise you're like, uh, okay, what's what's happening? You gotta mm. make an educated guess. Well, what about this? Maybe you don't want to run it like us, uh, both of all three of us now have UHD mm-hmm. 30, 40, 20, 160. Maybe you want to play it in 1080 full screen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, though to, to be, to be fair, um, there's not a lot of graphically demanding stuff here and I doubt it's, I doubt it's actually uh, rendering in UHD at, at best. It's probably upscale 1080. Um, yeah. Uh, so I'll, I'll give it a, I'll give it a, a launchy bits on the, uh, on the Fedora. Uh, Pedro, how's, how's it looking on Solus? Well, uh, it launches and it was getting a uh, green chair with a tick box over it until I got to the fifth stage, uh, the fifth level of the second stage, at which point it crashes reliably. So, yeah, it launches, but it doesn't stay launched for very long once you get to that point. Uh, it also forgets uh, if you alternate between full screen and windowed it forgets and just defaults back to full screen at least did on my end until i found the settings uh file and edited it uh everything else was fine the controls were very clearly made for a touch screen but they work as expected and the physics tend to break sometimes you'll shoot yourself or some boulders through bits of the map that were supposed to be solid but Mm -hmm. they're really not it's got some fuckery to it but i'm gonna say no here, uh, straight down the list for it ran. The controls work for what they are. Don't worry about I mean, the yeah, front yeah, section. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. You click on shit. That that's the extent of the controls. And really, I yeah. didn't see any graphical fuckery along that. So, a uh, clean bill of health uh, on the Ubuntu. Uh, like, like, likewise on Fedora. Yeah, uh, Solus gets, gets Solus uh, is crashing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, fun section. Here's the here, here's here's the meat of the review. So. Did you have fun, guys? Here's the thing, man. This is kind of the catch-all segment now. This is the opinion, because we've told you best we can on our operating systems of choice whether or not it launched and what you can expect before burning a refund on Steam. Now let's talk about whether or not we liked it. And if you're listening, think about uh, Portal Bridge Constructor without any of the fucking charm, graphical fidelity, or fun. Yeah, you know where this is going. Because this this is not how portals work. This you, you can shoot one portal and it'll alternate to the other color. Right there, you're seeing a problem because that's just not how portals work, Brad. If you're going to copy like the Running Man logo, which is something that you see like, hey, that's kind of elvish. Where'd you get that? If you're going to copy that shit, you might as well like yoink the left and right portal excretion mechanic because that's how portals are done and that's how they've always been done and that's how your brain is wired not like this this makes sense on a touch screen to do this interface but i couldn't find this game on a mobile store anywhere so i'm like what the hell's going on um clearly designed for touch screen uh unfortunately that does make dragging your dribble back and forth left and right especially across 3840 by 2160 of real estate fucking tiresome it does. You know, I gave this critter about 50 minutes uh, to charm the fuck out of me, and it didn't. It failed. It failed hard. Because if you're going to do a physics game, is something I think everyone's going to talk about. You might want to nail down the physics bit before you ship it out. And, you know, we have physics games like Golf With Your Friends. That's just nightmare fuel, but it's fun nightmare fuel. That's part of the charm of it. It's this, not fun at all. No, what are you talking about? No. You fucking crazy it, person. Sometimes, I think Jordan will talk more to it. You can just wait a fucking map out and beat it, which it's not a good thing. So six ninety nine for something that's definitely geared as a mobile game is a bit much to ask. So, yeah, for the fun segment, I'm going to give this one share, and that's a big hard nope. Yeah, so my roommate walked in while I was playing this game, and he, and he asked me what, what, what it was. And the best explanation I could come up with was, like, imagine if someone tried to remake Portal, but, like, didn't want to commit any effort to it. You would you would get this. Well, I can't and, say this is lazy, man. I mean, look at I mean, look at the backgrounds. You can tell some work. No, no, no. Like, yeah, cl- cl- yeah cl- clearly, clearly there, there's some effort into, like, the, the aesthetic. The gameplay, though, yeah, the, the actual thing that you interact with, the, the mechanical subsystems mm-hmm. that define whether or not you are successful or not, are garbage. Um, forcing the biggest problem, like Ben said, forcing me to alternate portals is the biggest misstep you could have done in this game. Um, 
the, the the fact that like if you're trying to do stuff, you have to like you have to like syncopate your your portal generation, mm -hmm. make sure that you hit the same spot as before. Is it just create? It's time consuming. Can I ask you a question? What? How long? I mean, did did anyone else? This goes to both of you. Did you resort to spray and pray? I've done that a couple times. Just just yeah, like, on the early levels, especially yeah, <laughs> yeah. And 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 that's 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 the thing too. Like the. The, the 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 core design of this game is is fundamentally flawed. Like perhaps perhaps if they gave me uh, the ability to switch with portal I'm shooting, it mm -hmm. might have been a little better. Um, and yeah, to 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 Ven's earlier point, absolutely you can wait games out. You can wait levels out. The, there there is there is definitely an RNG spray and pray element to this game because you'll build up momentum. Maybe maybe you'll hit something in a weird way, and eventually eventually you'll figure out that if you just kind of stay in this spot and wait it out, eventually you'll just go in the hole. The as as we say in Rocket League, you put the <laughs> ball in the hole, and 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 eventually you'll win. And that's again that's not good game design. That's just waiting. That's artificially <laughs> increasing length and difficulty. And that that's it. A lot of these puzzles aren't even particularly difficult. It's just the limitation of the core mechanic makes it tedious and time consuming to figure out the exact combination of clicks. And that's not fun to me. Um, I mean, say, say what you will about this being a mobile game. I mean, it's not a very good one, but at least I'd say it's about on par with what you would expect in the play store. I'm, I'm going to give that one share. I'm, I'm not digging this at all. Yeah, no, it's I like puzzle games. I do, and this one doesn't really do it for me. It's it's got the spray and pray element to it. It's trial and error. It's the best puzzle games, in my opinion, are are those where they. I've used this analogy before, but it's literally the game developer handing you a gun and some bullets and watching you shoot yourself in the foot repeatedly. Two two, two you... really two really good examples of that: Steven Sauce's role yeah. and the bridge. The bridge gives you the obvious solution and then laughs at you as you fail miserably implementing it. Precisely. And that's the mark of a really good puzzle game. This, this is pray and spray bullshit. It's not. Well, Pedro, can what? I ask you a question? Sure. Is this a case of, uh, for me, I felt this was more of a case of like, I know how to solve the fucking puzzle, but the mechanics just won't. They're making it, you know, you shouldn't have to fight the game to get what you. Yeah. And that is certainly part of it. and. When you see portals uh, like this, you expect, oh, portals, okay, so uh, momentum is conserved through the portal. Speedy thing comes in, speedy thing comes out. Except in this game, slow thing comes in, speedy thing comes out, because the portals propel you for some reason. And uh, I, I, got, I got another question. Do you ever notice that like the mouse clicks and the portal firing are a little out of sync? Uh, very much out of sync, yes. You, you can't, that's why I keep missing most of those. It's like, unless I'm stopped and I have the time to aim properly, it's just going all over the place. And 15 levels in, the game just starts crashing for me. I, I, w I didn't even mind this being, you know, a mobile game and being clearly designed for a touchscreen. I was okay with that. It's the game crashes and it's not fun. It's well, one yeah, chair you can. for me. I, I'm digging that, man. Um, that's pretty much... Jordan, what did you say? You never filled out a fun section. I did? I did. Uh, no. Oh, fun score. <laughs> I, oh, that was, that was a one chair. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there, I, I, put it, I put it in the wrong place. I put it where it used to go, not where it currently goes. Okay. Uh, there are good examples. What was the uh, little RPG game that was a mobile port that came to desktop? That was very well done. I had fun with it. Uh, the one where you did the little mining and crafting. It even had crafting in it, and I didn't completely Yeah, uh, Crashlands. Crashlands. Mm -hmm. that, I, I was like a quarter of the way through it, and there was enough elements. I was like, wait a minute. Is this on mobile? I went, mm -hmm. no fucks given. After you, and I was like, oh, shit. All right. This has actually been well adapted. This, I don't know where this falls. I mean... Hey man, I, I want to thank the developer for allowing us to break your game. That was um, yes. free of charge, of course. And mm -hmm. uh, I think that's going to do it for this week, Jordan. Yeah, I think that's it. Uh, that's what we thought about Portarius. Coming up next, uh, we have an email interview with Tommy Wiseau. Not really, but a boy so can dream. It's the linguistic equivalent of that, I would say. Wouldn't you know it? Nope. We've made it. No, we it's didn't. The end. Quit lying to people. End of the world. You can see the fire. It's coming in from my window. Never mind that. This is the hate mail. 
Okay. Where you can let us know whether or not, uh, well, we said something right, we said something wrong, you feel like we didn't cover a specific topic in enough depth, or you feel like we droned on for a little too long, like I am with this spiel right now. So, <laughs> and yet it keeps going. <laughs> LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button. It's pretty easy. Make sure to fill all the things. LGC Weekly is a thing you need to pick from the little selection box. You can ask Jordan for relationship advice. You can send us some keys. If you're a game developer, just make sure to include at least three or a build what we can share amongst the three of us. Sound good? All right. So Seems this good. week, what uh, do Josh. we got? Josh says, uh, staff st- some descriptions. He says, up until about fairly recently, the about page for Linux Gamecast listed the system specs for each person on the team. I really like being able to see those specs. Why did you take them down? Because we hate you. You specifically, Josh. <laughs> we're, bit, we're, actively, we're actively tracking your IP and blocking that portion of the website. The, Everyone else can see them. That's right? it. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of wondered. I went back and I looked and I was like, that was like six months ago when I updated the page. Um, no, it, I, I wrote Josh back because we actually don't hate Josh that much. And the system specs will be making a comeback in the chair acquisition. That's going to be a graphic and a list. And the reason it was pulled was because it was horrendously out of date. <laughs> so what you so were several seeing, us are on like two computers posts. Right, so. I, I have to wrangle these two cats and actually get. Uh, I, we'll do a full parts list, like linked up and everything, to let you know. Because I understand. It's like, hey man, I want to know. You know, Jordan and I practice. It's like Jordan, Jordan, I'll buy something, and I'm like, wait, all right, so that works. Good, I'll buy one. And uh, it's a good way to go about things when it comes to like memory, RAM, or you know, shit like that. Mm-hmm. So uh, that was it, uh, Gustavo L. El Brasilio. Uh, the right actual side. Gustavo. The, the Brasilero. <laughs> Tell me about it, Pedro. Yeah, so uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had some bit of hate mail from a Gustavo, and I assumed it was him. Yeah, you Well, did. some days ago, someone told me I was mentioned in an LGC episode. After checking that out, I realized that you guys revealed an email from another Gustavo. And, well, wait, there's wait. part two. <laughs> So part two uh, is, damn, I'm drunk. I just clicked the fucking reload captcha button. Well, it was not me. It was another Gustavo and the nonsense one. Wine podcast, what the fuck? Pedro, yeah, como, como você pode ter me confundido com aquele boco? Nunca será perdoado. That's where they got the idea for fucking Klingon. Portuguese. <laughs> if, if, Apply, dude, apparently time. if you speak Portuguese with a lisp, it sound, it's indistinguishable. You, you can't tell the difference. Hey, man, Gustavo, it's good to know you're still alive, buddy. Um, yeah, wine podcast. Uh, we need to get Frenchy. We need to get uh, we need to get Strider on t- to talk mm-hmm. about stuff. And may- maybe we can talk him into doing a, the uh, team, like the Council of Filthy Dual Booting Heathens, even though he totes mm-hmm. only keeps windows around because, I don't know, he's got some moon reason for it. Thoughts, Jordan? Or are you just still reading your topic while you're doing a show? <laughs> no, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just giving you a time, I, 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 I kind of tuned out when the Portuguese started like blurring because I got enough of that at my parents' place. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, it's just a screeching. reflex. You're like, <laughs> random, random screeching in Portuguese. I just, I just shut off. I shut down it's self-defense mechanism. No, uh, a, a wine show could be interesting. Uh, mm-hmm. It'd probably be good to get some people other than Strider who have like, you know, fact-based opinions. Mm-hmm. No, no, you, we need to be fair and balanced. <laughs> we, we need to be the Fox News of podcasting. <laughs> I'm going to hit the eject button on that. <laughs> yeah, nope, not touching that one. Speaking of eject buttons, cue the music. You can always find us around 9.30 Eastern Standard Time. It's kind of brilliant. Um, if you're wondering about that, if you want to get notifications, we're, we have a YouTube channel thing. This is what we use it for. Free, They're a free CDN that gives us like $15 a month. Um, smash that bell or subscribe or check out our schedule at linuxgamecast.com fuck you too buddy uh, <laughs> I'm, try, I'm, try, I'm, try, I'm trying to copy I'm trying to copy uh, Linus I'm Vin Stone you can find me on Twitter at Vin Stone I'm there at, on Google Plus plus Vin Stone and um, if you're a patron as you know uh, if you want to message me we are active in our discord so we're there hanging out send me an ad reply I'll get back to you I'm Jordan Spung. You can find my progress pics on my full body Linus Torvald Zentai cosplay on Twitter at the Burning Fool or plus Jordan Spung on Google Plus. 
And you can find me often nowadays, staring off into the distance. It has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that Discord is over there and the return video is over there. Motherfucker, it's you've the... been doing that since way before you got that other monitor. <laughs> yeah, like, no, no reason in the no, corner, like, jangling. I'm at saying you. I got video evidence of you just, like. <laughs> now I have an actual reason to uh, mm -hmm. look up there, and uh, I am Pedro Mateos. You can always find me on Twitter at Accounted4 or on Google Plus at Plus Pedro Mateos. All right. Uh, did we learn anything this week other than we probably shouldn't send Tommy Wasu a uh, fucking email and ask him to come uh, on the show? Oh, shit. We, we, we weren't supposed to do that? Fuck uh, you. God, you know. Oh. Credits. <laughs> we made it. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Next week. Lisa. Lisa's going to be on the show. <laughs> Lisa, like Simpson? Or? Yeah. Dental plan. <laughs> Lisa needs braces, Lisa. Maples. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Lisa. The, the, the Apple Lisa? Is Foxy going to show his old computer collection? <laughs> or maybe Jill will. She, I, don't, I don't know. I, my money's on Jill for like winning the obscure hardware collection contest. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Because she's like, she's like an OG AV geek, so she can probably pull out some random ass shit like like they only sell the radio stations. <laughs> Jordan, there's no such thing. There's no like. Wait a minute. Do you not work at a radio? Give me that back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that special radio station. Yeah, yeah. Listen, 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 they got the SWAT teams that come in, they, like freaking zip tie everyone, mace them, and steal the shit back. I, mean, I know how this. It's like, I, I, I work at a radio station here. Like, you can scan my talent badge. Like, no, that doesn't count. <laughs> Dynamite, everyone. We love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Five dudes. <laughs>